coming to you live from your God with a salute to veterans this Wednesday. Here's your host, CJ Walters! Yeah, 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 yeah! Happy Veterans Day, people. We salute, like you said, we're here with all due respect. We love veterans. We do have some veterans in the house. We salute you. Um, you did so that we didn't have to, and we're, you were here because of you, so we appreciate it. All right, with all due respect tonight, thanks to Periscope people and people in the audience for coming out. Tonight we're, uh, we're doing uh, The Pursuit is the topic tonight. Yeah. I'm fired up about it. So let's go ahead and get into it like we do, with all due respect, top five. You look really good in your hat, by the way. It's nice. It's warm. All right, top five. First one, woman trapped in subway bridge for eight hours. Road help me in tomato sauce. My question is, Subway have fridge? fridges? I don't know, like, like I'm gonna keep the meat somewhere. That was what I thought. It's like a walk-in cooler. Okay. I guess. She gets locked. She gets locked up, so she writes it on the window. Does she writes it in a, on a piece of cardboard, like trying to slide it under the door? So then hopefully, like a cleaning person or somebody coming in, with and they don't. So she's in there for eight hours. And she goes on talking about how it was terrible and she's got she was freezing and they said she's close to hypothermia and I'm like, come on. It wasn't freezing. It's not a freezer, it's a it's a cooler. It's like I'm sure she was cold. Oh, I'm sure it was uncomfortable. But I mean She's like, all I had on was leggings and a subway shirt. And I'm like, leggings are not pants. I don't first right. I'd lay down and like put some like lunch meat over my leg or something, like try to warm yeah. me up. Like hand and bread all over me. That isn't awesome. All right, moving on. I have to bring it out. It's the talk of the town. Uh oh. Watch out. That's anti Christian. This right here should be kicked out of all kinds of churches. That's anti Christian. So, if you haven't heard, <laughs> this is the Satan Cup that they said is Starbucks is waging war on Christmas because of this red cup. Right. And because it used to have snowflakes on it and snowmen and mistletoe and all that stuff, but they're saying that so they're going with a simple red cup that it's against Christmas. So you have all these Christians and everything that are getting crazy about it, talking about how it's anti this, anti that. My thing, until you have a, a picture of a gun pointing at a baby Jesus or something, then how, what are you talking about? I got something for all the Christians. Instead of going and spending seventeen dollars on a cup of hot chocolate from Starbucks, give it to somebody who needs it. There you go. It doesn't even taste. It's not even any good. It's terrible. So if you would pull my soapbox out so I can stand on it real yeah. quick, to all of you crazy, idiotic people who call yourselves Christians, if you're going to say things like this, do us all good, you know, normal, God-fearing followers of Christ a favor and keep your mouth shut. When it comes to stuff like this. Because that is the most ridiculous thing ever. And you got people who are, we're trying to bring to Christ the whole time. And they're over there saying, that is what I want to be a part of? Yeah. You've got some Doug, Doug Heffernan looking dude on Facebook going nuts about <laughs> how Merry Christmas and all of man right Merry Christmas. You're an idiot. Be quiet. Moving on. <laughs> Taking the fight to ISIS. Here's a free rifle. So this company is giving away free rifles to... People who are going over, see, they are going over there, right. um, hoping to try to use these guns to shoot somebody. Like they're trying to recruit people, but in so that you, have to, you can't just be like random Joe Smo. You have to be like one of the military going over there or something. But right. Providing the rifle, and so I got to look into this, and these rifles are like ridiculous. And <laughs> the, the statistics on it. Here, here's one. This rifle. The success rate on the first shot is 89% out to 800 yards. That's the redundancy. They said you don't even have to be a trained shooter to shoot these guns. Like they got some kind of capture and lock. Like when you go to shoot this, to pull the trigger, it locks on the target and follows it. It's good for up to 20 miles an hour. Don't matter about the wind, don't matter about nothing. The technology, from the time you go to squeeze the trigger and when you finish pulling it, 
That's what it does. That's unbelievable. 800 yards. I can kill a lot of deer. You can kill a deer. Like yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Give us one of those. All right, moving on. So this is something local. Grant County voters to settle this liquor issue about the county going wet. That's going to happen in December. Yeah, I, I'm not going to, I don't really know if I have an opinion on it, but I'm, I'm really interested to see what happens because I think that they're trying to come up on both sides and trying to come up with groups that are for it to get out and vote for it. But I think that there's some, some churches in the county that are trying to organize groups so that they can meet and that they can go and vote and, and vote it down. So I, I don't. I don't hey, what, what, what's your opinion now? You I'll be honest with you. I, I really, I don't. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. It doesn't. I don't well, feel like it affects me. Here's my opinion. And I was talking with Pastor Josh earlier today about it. He said, "I don't have no problem, zero problem, with someone going home from work, having a beer, whatever. I don't like it because I don't think it tastes good. But." I had no problem with you going to Walmart and getting a 12-pack, taking it home, putting it in your fridge. Care less. But what I don't, I can't wrap my head around is that for you to have a bar right down the road here, I don't, I don't like bars. Yeah. I don't like bars. I ain't nothing against packaged liquor or whatever. But having a bar in the county, I don't know how I feel about that. So that's my take on it. All right, moving on to the last one. Like we talked about the open with Veterans Day. Today is Veterans Day. Uh, we wanted to make sure that, I think, the older I get, the more I realize how important things like today are, how most people just kind of take this day for granted, right? It's yep. just another day. But if you really start looking at it, I wanted to just have, have put some stuff down here that wrote, I can't think of off the top of my head, but it says, we sit here, and here we sit in the wealthiest nation on earth, free to attend any church, marry whoever we want to. Um, we can write articles to the newspapers. We can do this, that. I mean, we've got freedom like no other that we take for granted. And, and you know, why do we enjoy, enjoy these freedoms? Because we have men and women who go over and protect and do the things that we don't, we don't want to. And they, and they, they made, you know, freedom isn't free. You've heard that, right? Right. So I don't think, it, I don't think we can thank those individuals enough. I mean, you've seen what it takes to, to go over overseas or, or to protect the, the country here on, on United States soil. And it takes sacrifice from all people and their families. Uh, and so, you know, thank you isn't enough, but that's all, you know, I got. I think that, you know, one day a year is a joke. Yeah. But it is what it is. We, you know, like I said, we couldn't, be, we couldn't be doing what we're doing right now without those individuals. So we salute you.
It develops, but it does not fall. See, that's what we no, really did say yeah. that! But it doesn't go it up in the It's still crying. It's still crying. That's a trick question. Trick question. Trick question. One failure. That's a trick question. Every day, more money is printed for Monopoly than the U.S. Treasury. <laughs> Truth or untrue? I want it to be true. I'm going to say... We're going to say true. 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 More Monopoly money is printed than U.S. Treasury. Yes. yes. Alright. We got one. One to one, wizard. Ping pong comes from China. True or untrue question. Say untruth because if we say untruth, he's gonna say what's well, true because. So it's too simple. Got to be untruth. Untruth. Final answer. Final answer. Untruth. Yes. Ping pong comes from England in the 1880s. Is that where the uh, Mayflower came from? That's not a question. <laughs> Great white sharks are more deadly than cows. Truth or untruth? Untruth. Untruth. He knows everything there is to know about sharks. Untruth. Yes! You die more from cow related accidents and attacks than sharks. There are 14 million insects per person on Earth. Final answer. That's a lot of insects. Mm. Oh. Untrue. It's more like 170 billion per <laughs> See, again, trick boy. Alright. You can either tie or win. How do you even buzz us on that one? Mosquitoes. You Wait a minute. <laughs> when you're wrong, you're wrong. Mosquitoes have teeth. Truth or untrue? This is a tiebreaker, man. I've never asked one. Mosquitoes, <laughs> I've never asked one either. <laughs> I haven't seen them. There is no, does they have to have some type of teeth? They bite you, right? Or do they sting you? They bite you, right? Mosquitoes bite you. Yes, I'm going with them. They have teeth. True. Truth. Mesquita, yes! congratulations yes! on winning the first ever You Can't Handle yes. <laughs> Suck it up. Take that, wizard. It's our victory song.
<laughs> Today's sponsorship is brought to you by Common Sense, reminding us that although you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, people aren't books, and dumb is dumb. Wear your orange, people. <laughs> Would you rather? Would you rather? I love this one. I love this part of the show. It's I could do this one every time. It always starts with something tiny, like a <laughs> hundred duck-sized duck horses or one <laughs> one horse-sized duck. Would you rather have a head twice the size of yours now or half the size of yours? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> or I'd rather or. I'm going to go with twice the size, because hopefully, at least if that's the case, maybe there's extra brain cells up there and I can be smarter. I'm going to go with half the size, because there's no way you're going to find a hat that's going to fit a hand that big. Nice. Would you rather own a boat or a plane? That's an easy one for me. A plane. A plane. What? What do you want? If you have a plane, you can fly anywhere you want. Exactly. Rent a boat. And if I'm rich enough to have a plane, I'm rich enough to go buy a boat. I, f I figure it would probably be a price. You know, that's much of a boat those, as much of a plane. What about one of those planes that actually floats? A float plane. You can finish off of it. Yeah. I would definitely go plane because I would travel yeah, around and fun stuff. Uh, would you rather live in the future? Or the past. How much? Kids, family aside, everything. Just thinking time wise. And how much in the past? Yeah, like how many whenever you want. In the past. Oh, I can you can take a time. I in the past. Was the same age now? Yes. In the past. Yes. I would invent yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I would go definitely in the past. You're gonna be. You're gonna biff it. You're, gonna, you're really gonna go back and be biff. Yeah. Get the almanac, go yes. back in time, become rich. rich. Yes. Right, okay. I hear you. Alright. I'm gonna court my wife when she's like three years old. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he doesn't know what to say about that. Yeah, we have a police officer. Can we? Okay. Hey, uh, yeah. Uh, would you rather be a, a rabbit or a horse? <laughs> Yeah. It's always a horse. Yeah. <laughs> I'd never go with a horse. The rabbit has too many predators out there. Yeah. The horses are dumb. I would, I would live on something. Yeah, but a horse, I would think a horse would live on average probably longer than a rabbit did. Plus, a horse gets really good stuff to eat. The rabbit has to fit for itself out in the wild. You could just be in like a white rabbit because you can't eat and you fit all day long. That's boring. Yeah. Last one. Here's a good one. Would you rather be known for forgiveness or faith? Would you rather be known for forgiveness or faith? Faith. Forgiveness. Put you two together. We'll have something. There you go. <laughs> All right, we're getting into the beat tonight, talking about the Orange Army. And why do we call it the Orange Army? This time of year, here where we live, you have what people really think when deer season comes in. We know that that's not true. Yes. But most people who are not avid Anybody can go out and shoot a rifle. Yeah. Not everybody can bow on or wants to. Right. So, when gun season comes in, there is a whole lot of people that go to the woods. Everybody and their brother. So, we oh, call it the orange arm because you have to wear, eh, not that orange arm. <laughs> <laughs> We call it the Orange Army because you have, yeah, that, you have people like that.
you have to wear the hunter's orange. And it's like there's just a slew of people that head to the woods. So what I'm going to challenge people here tonight is, if you live in an area where there's hunting, um, I challenge you to go to your local Walmart on Friday evening yes. and just count how many people you see there that are dressed like me and the shark out here tonight. Because I don't, under, I don't get it, but I'm telling you, if you go to your local Walmart establishment and go to the hunting section, yes. there will be at least six people in there with their hunters orange on. Yeah, 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 yeah. The night before. I don't, I don't know what I went up there for one time. It was the Friday afternoon before gun season. I don't know if I was getting a pair of gloves. It might not even have been hunting related. But I saw like 50 people in orange hats and I'm like, Hey, these people coming out of the woodwork. Uh, it's I, like four hours before hunting starts, and they're up there getting their hunting license and brother, all of this brother. stuff. I used to, when I was uh, in high school, I think I was a senior in high school, we'd actually go up there and spend all evening. <laughs> and just cap them. For entertainment. Just being like, oh, you know, smart mouth kids. Probably making fun of them or whatever, but just being like, what are you guys doing? Why? No one's going to shoot you in here. Oh yeah. Ah! So I don't only even wear my orange hat like while I'm driving during gun season. I don't even want anyone to know that I am part of the Orange Army. Yeah. You have to be. It's embarrassing. Wizard over under six orange army men in Walmart Friday. Over under. Over. Mm. We'll see. What's in the spy? Let's go. Let's go up there. Go for a check out. Maybe do a we'll, video. We'll go full out. Do a video right now. On the site. <laughs> On the site. Alright. So get into the meat before we get into it. Let's go ahead and bring our pastor for the night up. You know who it is because it definitely ain't Pastor Earl. Pastor Josh. Come on, talking about the pursuit, um, pursuit of Jesus Christ, but this so happens that deer season's here, so there, you know, you're also pursuing deer. Mm. So, kind of just tying it in together, I want to talk about, I had written down that the pursuit is the process. Would you agree with that? Yes, it is the process. And so we have, you know, different aspects of it. You, I would say you are an avid hunter. Would you say yes? Yes. Like you enjoy going into the woods. I enjoy the You can sit hunting. there all day. Yes, all day long. And you enjoy that part. Yes. You have to like the process just as much as the product. If you don't, you're not going to hunt very often or very long. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Myself, I could really care less about the process. I just want the deer. I just want the product. But, hey. But with the process, would you say that it's fair to say that someone like myself, his probably success rate is way down? Well, it depends on what Whoa, you, it depends really on how you define success. Well, let's just say, I'm not talking about shooting anything that walks. I'm talking about the product that you're looking for is a nice trophy animal. <laughs> right. Very okay. rarely does it happen that you do nothing, that you don't even sight your gun and you stroll into the woods the first time of the year and kill a deer that you can hang in the Bass Pro Shop, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Right? Would well, you say that's I would, fair? I would say that's very, it's very likely. Yeah. Not as likely. I mean, we've heard of it. We were talking about that. Just five minutes ago. Yeah. I think it comes to mind there was a guy that actually like tried to put a 180 inch deer in the back of his trunk in the car. In his car. Oh, no. Yeah. no, 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 no. It happened. I'm not saying anything, everything. It's all timing. But I'm saying the person who doesn't prepare right, is not as successful. Not going to be as successful. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Pastor Josh? Oh, yeah, for sure. So, you got to put in the time. 
The process you have starts. To endure through the process. The process can be ugly, though. It can. A lot of the deer hunt. I mean, think about it. Take me through someone who deer hunts year round. I mean, the process starts before deer season even comes into play. Yeah, really. It's, it starts probably May, June. I mean, if you really take it that far, putting in food plots, oh, and, ooh, ooh. Uh, putting out trail cameras, and learning uh, learning what kind of deer you have that you're hunting, learning their habits, learning which deer like to be around other deer, which deer like to be by themselves, which deer like to move at night, which deer like to move during the day. I'm not really sitting thinking you're crazy. There's a lot of different things that start taking place really early on, and then when you find all of that stuff out, then you start the preparation of where do I hang my tree stands. Um, when can I hunt those tree stands during, you know, what winds, what winds, what winds are right to hunt those tree stands and, uh, you know, just a lot of different things that you, that, that go into it. The stinky part is the food plot planning and all well, that. Well, what, the, but everything you just said, like, you were into, like, the first part of your second sentence and I was already like, there's a lot of <laughs> I love that. I love the process, though. It's 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 fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like I'm like, uh, you start, you're talking May because you know May and June. It's hot out there. It is. You know, it's all kinds of stuff. And then I'm not the type of person who wants to go sit in the tree stand all night. Used to be. I love hunting. Now I'm just like, eh. I don't really care. Boring. I like to eat here. And nothing wrong with that. Those horns don't taste anything. But if you know, a big deer comes out, hey, I'd be just as tickled to death. But that, I don't know. I think that's what the product is. You know what the process is. The point is, the person who is out there getting it done, going through that whole process, is going to be more successful than the person that's not. Definitely. All right, so tying this in. So what we're talking about tonight, the pursuit of Jesus, I believe you can look at it the same way. Is that the person who is prepared, the person who is in pursuit, more often than not, is going to be more successful. Not saying money-wise, I'm talking with your relationship with God, than the person who is not. Pastor Josh, would yeah, you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, what is that? Spending time in your word, spending time, prayer, life, the pursuit. Yeah. I mean, just as preparation for hunting deer or killing a deer, you know, there's a lot of preparation to understanding uh, the things that God wants us to understand. And part of that relies on us, on how much we want to do and how much time we want to spend in our word and, you know, how in depth we want to go? Because you can you can do a lot of surface level stuff, or you can get deep. Kind of you know just the way you you do the surface level hunting. Sharp likes to get deep in the hunting. You know what I mean? So I would agree with that. So you're saying like our Christian walk is like deer? Like people are like, <laughs> no, I'm not saying like a hundred thirty inch deer. Or I'm, not saying, deer. I'm not saying that. I mean, uh, salvation. You know, salvation. You, each person can be saved, you know what I mean? But there, the Bible does speak to, and, and I wasn't even planning on talking about this, but the Bible does speak to different rewards for different people. There's no doubt about that. There are there are rewards in heaven for those who who run after God harder and do things for the Lord harder and love people more. And There's no doubt about that. The Bible does speak to that. There are rewards for those, you know, Father will reward you in heaven, you know what I mean? So absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, most yeah. people most people don't like to talk about that. No, they don't. Because I don't think we give our lives to Jesus for the reward. You know right. what I mean? We give our lives to Jesus because we fall in love with Him. But the truth of the matter is, if we serve Christ like He's calling us to, there is a reward in heaven, and great is a reward for those who actually uh, do more for the kingdom and love Christ more, and their heart is more devoted for Him. I mean, there's no doubt about that in my mind. Well, so, I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean. It's like the person, it's, that would be like the person going out and wondering, you know, that'd be like me going out, you know, the surface hunter, like you said, and then just being like, I don't understand why I can't kill big bucks. I don't get it, right? They're like crying about it. Yeah. Well, what do you think? 
You don't even, yeah. you don't spend the time. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with a, a, a person who is, yeah. you know, wondering why, why is, why am I not seeing God move in my life? Why is God not, you know, why am I not hearing his voice? Why am I not doing these things? Um, you're not seeking him. You're not seeking him. You're not even knowing him. Well, I mean, and I think where this really applies, even maybe more so than any other place, is understanding the Bible. I, I, we even preached a sermon. I even preached a sermon on this, and I said one of the greatest threats or harms against the Bible is when Christians say it's too hard to understand. No, it's not. Right. You just don't spend enough time in it because you don't care enough about it. Sure. You know what I mean? Right. Like oh, you can't just read. You can't just go into the Bible and read a passage one time and expect to understand it fully. That's not what God's looking for in our lives. He's looking for us to 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 go in depth with this, to spend some time in the Word, uh, because the truth is. The, the, the concept of salvation is, is easy to see in the Bible, but the th God is complex. We cannot forget that. You know what I mean? Like, none of us are ever going to know everything about God, but we can know what's in this Word if we read it more. I think that's where this really applies to me. It gets me thinking about it. Like, like I'm going through the Old Testament in a year, but I am way behind right now because I love to spend, like, a whole week on one chapter right. and, like, read it. And then read it again, and read commentaries on it, and read this commentary on it, and read this commentary on it. it and I'll spend a whole week on just one chapter when I'm supposed to be reading, you know, three chapters a day. Right. You're right. But way at, behind. At that point, who gives a rat time in? It doesn't matter. I'm not. I'm not worried about the schedule. What good does it do to read something the whole way through and then understand it? Yeah, nothing. absolutely. There's no. There's no way you can read. You know, I think it's beneficial to read the Bible in a year. You do that, but you're not going to understand it all. If you spend more time on the scriptures, you're going to understand them better for sure. Sharp, what do you got? Um, I did, I, the, what I, the scripture that I picked out was kind of, was kind of um, in the term, in relation to hunting, I guess you could say, is I guess the more time you spend in the woods, you're not necessarily guaranteed success sure. with a big buck. You're not. But I think what's cool about God is that you are a guaranteed success. And the scripture tells us that. Um, in, in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 20 or chapter 4 verse 29 it says, but from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him if you search after him with all your heart and with all your soul. So it's not like if you search after him with all your heart and all your soul, you might be successful like in deer hunting. If you put in the work and put in the time, you might be successful. You know, with God, if you if you put in the time and it's sincere, you're going to find him. And the more you find him, you know, the more you'll love him. The more you love him, the more you're going to continue to seek him. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's, that's what I think. That's how the that whole song is playing in my mind. Yeah. 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 You know what other song I think about a lot? Oh, I see. Yeah, the other song that I that I think about a lot is uh, Lauren Daigle's. Uh, I think Lauren Daigle sings it. Pursued, right? No, that's uh, Daniel Boston. <clears throat> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, Who is song? Man. Daniel Boston. Boston's the guy who wrote. Uh, yes, you're right. I'm yeah. wrong. God's you're not right. dead. Or and, yeah. but anyways, at the very beginning, uh, it's a prayer, basically saying, "Strip everything away from me. Take everything that I have. Take it away from me." So all I have is you. Right. That part of that song is at the very, very beginning, and I think that it's at the very beginning of the song uh, for a reason, because that's the first thing that you have to be able to do in your walks and as a Christian. Now, that's a scary prayer to sing out to God and to really say that and to really mean it. Like, take everything away from me. Every, anything that is a road, a, a speed bump, a roadblock, anything that keeps me from... Seeking after you and being in pursuit of, uh, of you, God, take it away. How many of us would be bold enough to really sing that out and just sincerely mean it? Yeah. No, we have a lot of stuff taken away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to a lot of layers. Yeah. So, I think what you said was a great point is that that is the big difference between not, like you said, deer hunting. You can go out and prepare all year. You can hunt the right stands and the white right wind. You can do all that kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, you might come up empty. Right. You just might. So. Okay. That's often. It happens often. 
happens on a more, more often than not. More often than you are successful. And I think that I don't know that I ever thought of it like that because, like you said, scripture it's right there. The more you see God, the more you find Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So I'm talking about that. I was reading the scripture that I was reading was just kind of going through psalms and, and different things and the one that I picked out was it's kind of like in Psalms 119 uh, verse 9 I like this because it kind of it's kind of asking a question is it, how, can a, how can a young person stay pure and then it answers it by obeying your word and verse 10 is where it says I have tried hard to find you don't let me wander from your commands I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you I like this part because when it talks some of some of the uh, I forget which which Bibles which versions say what, but someone says I have pursued you, I have been in pursuit of you. Uh, this one says I have tried hard to find you, which is basically yeah, pursuit. But I think it's cool because it talks about it talks about the person who is who is in pursuit. And sometimes when we are in pursuit, you can be in full pursuit of God, I mean, as hard as you've ever gone, and there's still going to be days that you're just like, are, hello, God, are you still there? Like, I'm just trying to figure this out, because I feel like I'm running hard after you, seeking you, but it just feels like that you're kind of, there's kind of a disconnect there. Um, and I think that's just God the whole time is like, I'm not, like, you guys are so needy, right? Like, you're so needy. I'm here. I didn't go anywhere. But I think you can relate that to hunting. What, too, is like you're that person who has prepared all year, yeah. and you've done this, and you've done that, and you've done this. And, you know, I think just a quick story from my experience is that, you know, there was a time where I was one of those hunters, like you do now, just kind of go out there and do whatever it takes. And I remember putting in all the time and doing this and that, this and that, getting ready and playing the wind right. The day came that you know, this was going to be the day. And I had these bucks. I knew that they were going to be here. And put all this time and energy going and putting these stands up in the right spots. The day came, got up in there, and some something had happened, and those deer had changed yeah. course. And were now using a different way to go to and from these woods. And it was 100 yards that way. Yeah. It's just kind of like... You know what I'm saying? And it deer didn't cooperate. It didn't cooperate, but it's like, I said, so like, if you tie this into deer hunting, yeah, I get it, because you're like, I have tried hard to find you. Like, <laughs> you know, I can imagine talking to God like that. Right. It's the same way that you do in the woods. It's just frustration. It's out of frustration, right? We get in these places where we think we're, we're going in total pursuit, and we don't give God enough time. We have zero patience when it comes to God. We're going to sit in the deer stand for days on end, but when it comes to God, we're like, I just pray. What's going on? Mm -hmm. What's the deal? Right? Yeah. So, what scripture do you got, Pastor Josh? Well, I like I like uh, your scripture, too. Uh, but I was thinking about this. You know, there are scriptures where it says, right, like your scripture, the more you seek me, the more you find me, right? And then, you know, there's, you know, the psalm, probably of David, I'm assuming, but uh, where he says, you know, I've, I've been seeking you with my whole heart. You know what I mean? And uh, so there are, there are those scriptures, but then there's also the scripture in Romans chapter 3. And, I, and I, I don't want people to be confused because there are scriptures that say, hey, seek God. And then there's other scriptures over here that say nobody seeks God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like how can that be, you know, how does that correlate? Nobody seeks God, but you want me to seek God with my whole heart. So I wanted to talk about Romans 3 a little bit. And Romans is my favorite book of the Bible, so it's no doubt uh, everybody knows that about me. But in Romans uh, chapters 1 and 2, he's talking about how the Gentiles are bad, right? And how they need a Savior. And the Jewish people are kind of like standing back like, ah, Gentiles, you need a Savior, you know what I mean? Like thinking they're good. And then in Romans chapter 2, Paul flips it on the, on the Jewish people. He's like, no, you think you're good. You're no better. You're just as bad. It may be even worse. You know what I mean? And uh, then he gets to Romans chapter 3, and he says this in uh, Romans 3. I'm going to start at verse 9. I love these uh, verses and, and, the, and the point of this. 
He says, what then? Are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged, already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under sin. So, it doesn't matter what, what background you come from, what heritage you come from, all human beings are sinners. And uh, he says in verse 10, as it is written, and he's quoting from Psalm as well, None is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good. Not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of asp is under their lips. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood in their paths are ruin and misery. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So I want to stop there. He's just talking about every sinner, is not, every person on the face of the planet is a sinner. You know what I mean? All of us. And I don't want people to be confused on that no one seeks God scripture. You know, that verse. Uh, because I think people misuse this and say, God, you know, you know, like, like Calvinist people misuse this verse and say, nobody seeks God. God saves who he wants to save and he, and he leads others to hell who he wants to lead to hell. And that's just right. not the truth. Um, so I wanted to, to clear this up. And, and the whole point of what Paul just said is right here coming up in verse 19. Or, or, or the next few verses. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. So that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of law, no human being will be justified in the sight, in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. So his whole point about what he just said earlier is this. No one can get to God by their works of the law. It's not meaning nobody actually tries to seek God. What he's saying is nobody actually can get to God through works. Jewish people, Gentiles, whoever you may be. You do not get to heaven. You do not get to God or get in a relationship with God by the good things you do. It just doesn't happen that way. And I think the cool part about this is the fact that, and, and he was trying to talk about it earlier, is this. That, yes, we seek God. There's no doubt about that. We seek God. And we need to seek God. And we, have, we play a part in salvation. But the other part about it that is so awesome is God is seeking us as well. As much as we seek God, God is seeking us that much more. doesn't mean God's, God is saving us entirely by Himself. You know what I mean? There, there's us seeking Him and Him seeking us. It goes together. And that's what I love about this, is that we cannot get to God through our works. We can only get to God by the one work of faith, believing in Christ. You know what I mean? The works of, the, those works of faith, trusting in God, believing in Christ and what He did on the cross. Uh, repenting, confessing, those things, being baptized, those works of faith, not anything else. And that's what I like about what we're talking about tonight, is that, yeah, we are called to seek God, but the truth about the God that we serve is that He sought us way more than we sought Him. That's what I love about it. And it's, it's both, of those, both of those play a part in it. You have a free will to choose, and God is still sovereign, and He still does. Uh, the Holy Spirit is still convicting people of sin. And trying to lead them to salvation. And I think God, you know, bad things happen in people's life because God is trying to save them. And, and God, if it wasn't for God, I would not be saved. But I had to choose to accept that salvation as well. You know, I had to choose, I had to seek after him a little bit. I had to, but he sought me most of the way. And uh, I've done, the, I, you know, the illustration of like, you know when you're like turned to the side and somebody puts their finger by your face and they say your name, like, that's what God, God is right there. We just have to turn just that little bit to him. And what we say, you know what I mean? So, I love that. That's what, that's what I got. There's that song. There's that song. That song gets me every time. Well, you were going to share a scripture, another scripture, aren't you? I'll never forget the first time I listened to the song. I just started crying. I don't even remember who sent it. Somebody sent it. I think, um, I remember sending you guys some Daniel Boshta stuff when I was teaching at CMZ. I don't know if it was this song or not. It was, and I was just in tears. But Psalms 14, uh, verse 2, it says, The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand and who seek after God. So that just goes along with like, like what yeah. you were saying. You know, and even ties in with what you were saying that you did all the all the preparation for deer hunting, and then you got there, and the deer weren't there. They didn't they didn't follow through on their part on what they were, were so, 
you know, what they were supposed to do to make it all come together. But God promises in His Word, in His in His Word, that He will. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, you talk about a, God is a hundred percent success rate. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's that's pretty powerful. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Pretty awesome. You're talking. You're talking about a, a deer. You're talking about the God of the universe. Yeah, hundred percent success rate. Who am I? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, to have that kind of success rate, it's ridiculous. Yeah, we we know all kinds of stories of people who sought after God and found Him. Now. Um, there are all kinds of people who are trying to see God in the wrong way right. by their works. You know what I mean? They're trying to see God by trying to be a good person. They're trying to see God by trying to make up for all the wrongs they've done. You know what I mean? Trying to, they've done wrongs in the past, so now they're trying to be a really good person. They're trying to earn their way to heaven. It's not how it works. That's not how you see God. You know what I mean? I think you see God by believing in Christ. You know what I mean? That is the seeking God. He's looking. That's the way. He, that's what he's looking for in our lives. I think. I, I, I think that this. Uh, I think that this show tonight should have been way longer than just an hour. But I, I think there's three ways, and you can correct me if I'm wrong or, or help me out with this. There's three ways to see God: in your word, through prayer, and through fasting. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I mean, and that's that's how you pursue mm -hmm. God. So I think you know, bringing up the, the point that you brought up earlier that. A lot of people, I think a lot of people try to justify why they don't read and study God's Word. Oh, yeah. I, mean, you know, I do sometimes in my life. I, th I think, I think, and that's funny that you bring that up because that's kind of what, how we're going to wrap this thing up was ways to pursue. And there was a few things here that I had jotted down. But I think that when, when you were talking about the prayer, the people who are in, you're going to have different people and this gets into a whole different... But you know, the, the what, who was the, the two individuals? The Marys and the Mary Martha. Martha yeah. Yeah. They were two totally individual... They, yeah, they were different. Two, they different. were wired. Yeah, different. Absolutely. Just like us three sitting here right here, we're probably all... We're all wired different. You know what I'm saying? There's always... There's something that one of us will... will you know, he could be this guy. I'll be this guy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But that's why the body of Christ is so important because God didn't make a bunch of robots. He made a bunch of people who could do different things, different things so that it would all work together. But I think, like you said, if you get the prayer, the fasting, the, the being in your word, you get that part down, the rest of the stuff is just cream yeah. and cheese. Yeah. Right? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna want to do... And that, yeah. So ways to pursue was... The first one it was go for the maximum, not the minimum. Which basically choose to go after more than just the bare minimum of God. Yeah. Right? I think when you, you go to yeah. pursue, you pursue all of him. Yeah. Not just many people just want to get to heaven by the skirt. Exactly. You know, I saw this just, around I, somebody's coattails. Yeah, I saw to this great to thing on Twitter today. And I, it wasn't even I don't even know if it was God related. But it was a really cool quote that would that went along with that, and that was "Walk the extra mile to go across the crosswalk." It's less crowded there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, bam! I don't get an old snap. Old <laughs> <laughs> uh, snap. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> Are do you still have more ways to see God yeah. here, Adam? You want to add something to that? No, I mean, I I can tell it after you. All right, so. I think that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Yeah. Uh, pursue more of his dirt on your hands. I think it talks about being being willing to serve as Jesus did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think what you said is that you don't get you don't get to relationship with God by your acts. Yeah. And your works. But that doesn't mean that you love God prayer and sit on the couch your whole yeah, life. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like there is some servanthood involved. Yeah, yeah, it's, but it's not to it's not to earn stuff. It's no, just because we love him. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think I just want to make a, a, a disclaimer there is that when we say you can't get to heaven by works, doesn't mean you don't do anything. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, right for sure. Right, we are we in this is chime in. We're actually, you know, we do get saved by works because there's somebody working to make the church run. There's somebody filling in, doing volunteer work to be here to set up the opportunity for us to get saved. And yeah, we're. I mean, so, so, so a lot of people, right, a lot of people yeah. separate. It's actually a separate pursuit. We pursue Him, 
and then we pursue his kingdom, yeah. which is where our volunteer and our hours should go. Yeah. Absolutely. I would, I would, put, I would quote uh, you know, the book of Romans again and say, people don't come to faith. They come to faith by hearing the word of God. And right. it's normally by people, you know, people hear the word of God because people are serving and they're preaching and they're teaching and faith comes by hearing and hearing to the word of God. That's the only way faith comes. Right. And I think, so I think that's a great point. I think what people, what people when they hear that scripture, when they think about it is, uh, you know, he kind of just opened it up to a different word, way that I've ever really... Yeah, I like it. Because it, it is true, but what I think what the scripture is meaning is that you have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. You can't, like, spend your whole life being a good person. Yeah. And not knowing him and get to heaven. Yeah. Absolutely. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Because the only reason why you're being a good person, and here's the difference, and this is exactly what the commentary would say on Romans chapter 3. The only reason why you are being a good person is so you can earn something or receive sure. respect or, you know, it's for your gain. That's not why we do works. That's not why we do what we do for the church. We don't do it for ourselves. The only reason why I get up and preach is so people can be saved. The only reason why you guys get up and sing and, and you worship and, and we do the things that we do is not for ourselves. It's not to earn something. It's not to receive something. It is so other people can enjoy and come to know and have a relationship with Christ the same way we have. That's why we do what we do. It's a total different mindset. Absolutely. If it was another way around, another you know, reward thing, we would have put a long time in Yeah. Yeah, I mean that. And that's, there's no trophies. No, no, that's the point. In worship, there's no trophies. <laughs> I mean, that's the point. That's the point of Romans chapter three. Is no, people are, you know, the Pharisees were trying all they they didn't do works because they wanted to, they wanted to get close to God. Right. They did works because they wanted everybody to see how close to God they were. Right. There's the difference. You know what I mean? That's the difference. I think I think what drives me crazy is. Hearing you and you heard it, the people that are like, they feel like because they're they're you know they're they're pursuing God, but like every, that any like certain jobs in the church or um, any kind of servant, whatever, is beneath them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like why well, I'm called? You know that'd be like Josh, the pastor. I'm the pastor of this church. I'm not taking out the garbage. Yeah. They're like, dude, the garbage is running out into the floor. Don't you think that needs to be changed? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. yeah. We, we, all, you know, we talked about that at youth on Thursday. Last Thursday we were t talking about that. Christ was a servant leader. Absolutely. You got serve. To, if you want to be a leader, learn how to serve. That's how you be a leader. You got the man who died for our sins washing some dude's nasty feet. Yeah. And you can't take out the trash? Yeah. You know, well, he, became, you know, he became a curse on the cross. Like he, That's a curse. <laughs> yeah, oh. so, uh, you know, all I was going to say earlier was this. Uh, I remember seeing, I remember hearing Andy Stanley, and, and, and he had a great point that uh, in people's life, what leads them close to God, some things they control, some things God controls. And uh, he was talking kind of like prayer, you know what I mean? Coming, you know, prayer, coming to church. Reading our word, hearing the word, but he also talked about traumatic life events, you know, that we can't control sometimes lead us to God, and that's his doing. Uh, service was another one that he talked about. Like he, he, you can look it up, but he lists like five different things that are essential for someone's relationship with Christ, and it's you know, it one of those is service, and that's what I was going to, you know, prayer, fasting, reading our word, right. but then service. We we get to know God by serving. That's the way I came to know Christ. You know, gave my life completely to Christ was by serving people. Whatever you've done, the least of these, you've done unto me. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. People find Christ in service. So, for instance, like, someone who doesn't know Christ, if we give them a job in the church and they right. keep coming, that may be the way they come to know Christ because we gave them a job in the church. You know, we're not te telling them to teach the Bible. You know, they don't even have a relationship with Christ yet. But that doesn't mean they can't serve coffee back there. And then through their serving coffee, they come to know Jesus. You know what I mean? That's what something Andy Stanley's church does extremely well. They bring non-Christians in and they let them do some jobs in the church. And then those people end up being Christians. And so service is another way, I think, that we see God and can find God. 
That's how it ended in there. All right, the last one, we'll wrap this thing up. Pursue more of his fruit in your service. And I think this one was, was, it talks about if your service for God lacks the fruit of changed lives, you don't need to try harder, pray more, whatever. Try to switch it up. It's talking about the first thing you need to do is examine your personal relationship with Jesus. Yeah. And, and see how closely connected to him you are. Mm -hmm. You know, what's your pursuit look like? What's the process? What, you know, what shape is the process in? Yeah. Because if, you're li if lives are not being changed because of what you're doing, you're serving, that's anything. You know, I think we can, we can look up here and say, okay, is with all due respect, what is what fruit is coming from this thing? And if it's not pr pr producing any fruit that we can see, or we have heard about, or whatever, we need to, you know, all those involved, Take a deep look at it, yeah. everybody involved needs to get there and say, well, wait a minute, I think this is easy for me because I, mean, I don't care if no one else, if no one shows up and the periscope thing goes down, I've seen the fruit just in my relationship. Yeah, you know, just it's kind of and it's bad, but it's accountability almost. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. Even if if no one comes, if no one shows up, if no one follows on Periscope, and if it's just us hippie you're talking and discussing, it, the fruit is there. Yeah. Now I look for God to, to to do more, and there might be a time in the road where we need to look at that because everybody, it, no one's perfect. Everyone has bad days. Everyone needs a little bit of encouragement, like, hey, keep going. Keep going. You know, I've seen your processes. Your processes slacked off a little bit. You haven't been hitting it as hard as late or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought that was, was pretty good because that's what we do, right? In church, in ministry, and all those things. You've got to, if you're pursuing God like you should, you should be seeing some type of fruit. Yeah. Somewhere. If you're serving God, there should be something. Pastor Josh, I appreciate you coming up here tonight. No problem, man. It's Hanging out. This is like a permanent. We're just going to put a yeah. name tag on it. Yeah. Pastor Josh. This is, this is my chair. It's my chair. It's my chair. Pastor Josh, everybody. Like twice up here. I didn't even have to do this. Wizard, you see that? You confirm. <laughs> Every time you guys would look at the board, I'm like, pour some more back up. So he didn't have any. There you go. He's not gonna hit that playback button on uh, Periscope. I, I was yeah. thirsty. So that's a good topic tonight. It's a great topic. I think. Uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, can, can do you think that you can be in pursuit of God and not? Being your word, not being in prayer. I don't think you can think you are. I don't think you. I don't think you. I mean, I can. It's like chasing a. I'd be like trying to date a girl and her not know you exist. You're like, I'm going to court that girl, but you're not court. You're stalking her. <laughs> You're not, you're not pursuing her. You're not pursuing her. You are a creep. So, next week, who knows what we're going to get into next week. I haven't thought that far ahead. We have, hey, good luck to all the Orange Army men out there. Good luck, Saturday. Send us those pictures. Hashtag yeah, WABR. Pictures.